Today I'm going to be telling you all about my 3T Strada and the one big problem that stops me using it for my forthcoming wheel test. Let's check it out. So tomorrow I'm going to be dropping a video specifically about the L2 ERX group set and how my experience has been with that for the past 3000 kilometers. Uh, but for today I'm going to focus on the rest of the bike. Uh, it's typhoon season here in Chamon right now and it's a whole bunch of rain so no footage of me riding today but I've been riding this thing since the end of May now. Got plenty of kilometers on it like I said 3000 kilometers so I think I have enough to tell you about it. So before I built this frame up I did a little video on it, uh, all the components I was going to put in it and stuff and in that video I held a little competition to guess the weight of the bike. Uh, the guy who won, Graham Smith, was one of the winners. He guessed, uh, he guessed correctly so it was 6.88 kilograms for the bike without the pedals, which for an aero early disc brake frame, I think that's pretty impressive. Again, lots of that weight is because of these CRW wheels and the side brake crank set, which chop off a lot of weight. Uh, also in June, I put up a little goofy video using AI to like mimic GC Performance's voice going over this video, but today uh, I'm gonna go through the bike in my own terms. Uh, anyway, let me give you a quick rundown of the build and all the components I went for and how they've been performing over the past 3,000 kilometers. So let's kind of go through the whole bike, starting from the top, go to the bottom, talk about the components and how they've been. So starting at the top is this generic carbon saddle with the white padding. That's been super comfortable, but I'm not very picky when it comes to saddles anyway, so that was never going to be a problem. Uh, seat post has been no problem. It's nice and thin. I think its thinness also gives it a bit more compliance because there's not much seat post sticking out, but it rides pretty comfortably. I guess part of that is the fact I'm using 28s, which I don't really use much on a rim brake bike, but uh, yeah, the bike was more comfortable than I thought, and I think in part due to this uh, thin kind of seat post. Then down to the frame itself, uh, the color's been growing on me. I kind of like it, especially out in the sun. Uh, you look down and see all the glistening of the paintwork on the top tube, looks pretty rad. Uh, like I say, one major problem with the frame, but I'll get to that in a minute. And uh, let's go forward to the handlebars. The handlebars, the Fast Sports F1 S, the updated version. I really like it, that's been perfect. It looks nice on the bike, uh, no issues, been super lightweight. Uh, one feature or quirk is the shape of the drops down here. So they're kind of uh, an oval shape. And uh, at first it took some getting used to because it, it maybe digs into your hand more than a, a normal round one would, but I guess it's for aero purposes or whatever. But um, again, it doesn't dig into your hands to the point where it's uncomfortable, but you notice it compared to other bars for sure. But uh, yeah, overall, the ergonomics of the bar have been no problem. The white bar tape has been fine too. It still looks pretty white, so that's good. Uh, the L2 ERX shifters, I love them. The shape of them is great. They're nice and thin. I can get my fingers and thumb around the neck of the shifter really nicely. Uh, if I'm in the aero heads position, I can still pull the brake. Uh, and I can use my little pinky to do shifts. So they've been great. I really love the shape. As I say, this bike, I love riding in the aero huds and this hood is just enough to grab on with like three of your fingers. So love that. Also at the front of the bike, something I thought I'd hate was like the external cable routing that you get on the, uh, on the 3T Strada or the old one at least. So uh, when you're riding the bike, you can only really see this one because this one's underneath the bar, obviously and goes into the fork, but it doesn't get on my nerves as much as I thought it would. Um, obviously it would look a nice clean, a, lo a lot cleaner without these cables, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, front fork, obviously no issues. It's a fork, it does its job. Uh, onto the wheels. So I used the Kraftworks CRW uh, 5060 wheels. And again, a big fat boy in the front and a not so fat, but still pretty fat boy on the rear. Great wheels, no issues. Like I said, I've done 3000 Ks on these now, probably a bit more because I had them on another bike beforehand. Uh, no issues, no creaking, no clicking, no weirdness. Obviously there was the peak torque drum with his wheels, but that has all since been addressed and my pair of wheels didn't have that issue. Uh, obviously we sell these wheels on pandapodium.cc, but for now they're basically sold out. There's like a one month waiting list now. So yeah, you guys have been snapping up those wheels and they're trying to catch up with supply as quickly as they can. Uh, this Fall Sports F1S handlebar also in stock over on pandapodium.cc. Bottle cages, these are the Cybrae bottle cages. Uh, again, not cheap, pretty expensive. 
but they hold the bottle really well don't lose a bottle uh, not too tight not too loose so don't you know mess up all the graphics on your bottle going in and out like I say not cheap but i like them the crank set also from Cybre. again i showed you guys this in the components video so i won't talk about it too much but yeah super stiff super light 165 mil length the way i like it uh dub standard and i've got that in a hambini bb and the hambini bb has been perfect as well uh, Hambini BB is obviously pretty expensive, but when you're factoring the entire cost of the bike, I don't think it's that much money, especially with the issues I've had with this frame. Who knows what other issues I would have had with the bottom bracket. So you slap a Hambini BB in there and you never have to worry about having any issues. Also on the side brake cranks, I've got the XKD power meter. So the new XKD power meters have these more subtle graphics. I kind of dig it. Uh, the Cybray carbon fiber chain rings, I use a 50-34, always been enough for me because I like high cadence. Uh, the rear wheel is obviously also the CRW, uh, I've actually got a flat at the minute, I got a flat when I was riding this last time and uh, patched it up and limped home but it's still got a low, slow leak in it so I need to change out that tube. Uh, but in 3000 kilometers riding I've got one flat. Uh, and so yeah, that's with these Maxxis High Road SL super light, super fragile tires in a 28 and also the 19 gram Ride Now TPU inner tubes. So 3000 K is one flat. I think that's acceptable for me. And like I say, I was able to patch the flat with the patch kit to get home, uh, but it still has a slow leak. So I'll swap out that patch. I'll swap out, I'll swap out that tube when I get around to it. The rear cassette is the Zony one that I talked about before. Also 199 grams. So super lightweight 12 speed cassette. Also in stock over on pandapodium.cc. It shifts great, but one of the reasons it shifts great is because of the group set. So I kind of, the killer feature of the L2 ERX is the ability to tweak the position of every single cog. So I can micro adjust the position of the rear derailleur for every single gear. So you can pretty much make any cassette work with this thing. So that's shifted flawlessly. The same with the front side brake chain rings. Shifting has been no issue, but I'll talk about that more in the L2 video coming up. Uh, disc rotors, I actually have uh, Jaguar rotors. I have 140 front and rear. Like I say, I weigh 51, 52 kilos. So for me, I don't need that much stopping power and I don't convert that much mass into heat because there's not that much mass. Uh, also a quirk of this frame because of the way that the shroud kind of is on the front fork, I can't actually put 160 rotors on the front wheel of this. And that's because two reasons. Number one, so this fork has kind of like a shroud that goes over the mount. And number two, because the L2 calipers have this weird kind of like adapting plate. So even if I wanted to run 160s on the front, I couldn't with these L2 calipers on this frame. If I change the calipers or change a frame, no problem. But like I say, for me, not an issue because 140 is more than enough stopping power and more than enough heat dissipation for me. Uh, pedals have been good too. That This is another Chinese brand called Zire. Zire. They're kind of like a, a factory based brand. So like there's not much way for us to sell them on Panda Podium because there just wouldn't be enough profit margin in for us. But uh, if you do need some pedals, these Zire pedals have been fine for me so far. So how does the bike ride? Like I really like riding this bike. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the geometry of it is like really neutral feeling. It kind of turns into a corner pretty quick, I guess, because the rear wheel is so far forwards. But at the same time, it's not like twitchy and sk skiddy like you get on bikes that usually turn in pretty quick. So I like what they've done with the geometry. I'm a, I'm a fan. And uh, maybe the front end is a little bit too high for me. I'd like to be a bit more aggressive, but uh, for the TT HUDs position, it's still a good setup. Yeah, I've had no other problems with the bike in like the 3000 kilometers of riding. Um, the Hambini BB has been great too. At 6.8 kilos, it obviously climbs okay. Uh, I'm used to like five or six kilogram rim brake bikes, so obviously not as dainty as those on the steep bits, but like if you've got a nice 5%, 4% climb or something, then you know, you don't feel bogged down by the weight so much. Uh, but yeah, I did quite a few biggish rides on this, like 100 and some kilometers, you know, we have a big stretches on the flat stuff between climbs, whatever. And just getting into the TT HUDs position on this thing just feels so good. Like you can do super low tick over power for me, like, you know, like 140, 150 watts. And it just sits there at like 34, 35 Ks an hour uh, all day long. So super nice in that regard. And so that brings us on to the problem with this bike or the problem with the frame and why I can't use it from a wheel test. So I have a huge wheel test coming up. I've got like 12, 13, 14 pairs of uh, disc brake wheels that we're gonna be putting head to head. And the reason, that was the reason I originally built this bike because you guys know me, I prefer rim brake bikes, but to do a disc brake wheel test, I need a disc brake bike. 
But, so one day I swapped in a pair of wheels, I think it was the, the Luen Mega wheels I actually swapped in, and uh, the tire hit the side of the frame, hit the chainstays, and at first I thought it was the wheel wasn't dished right. And yeah, so basically after trying a few different wheels, I found out it was actually an issue with the frame, not the wheels themselves. So basically the whole wheel sits a few mil, like about three mil to one side in the, in the frame, uh, which means that if you have a chunky tire on a chunky wheel, uh, it will touch the, the chainstays. So yeah. And uh, now I can kind of fix it by shimming in some spaces between the wheel and the frame. Uh, but then obviously the position of the disc rotor in regard to the disc caliper is also off. And it's all just a bit messy. And because I'm going to be doing back to back reviews of wheels, swapping them in and swapping them out, I don't want to be messing around with shims and spaces and washes and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, big disappointment, but yeah, like, so this frame was second hand, but no one knows the history of it. So, you know, was it a QC reject that got thrown over a factory fence and then bought up or something? Uh, or was it crashed? I mean, I can't see any signs of damage on the frame, but again, this paint job might not be a stock paint job. So maybe it was repaired and repainted after a crash. Uh, literally, no one knows. A bit scary, but I guess this is a risk you take when you buy secondhand frames. Uh, but overall, I still love the bike, so I'm gonna keep riding this bike for sure. And I'm just gonna keep it as it is with these CRW wheels on it, because they've been amazing, like I said. The group set, like I say, there's gonna be a full video on that dropping tomorrow or in the next few days. And uh, this group set basically saved the build. If I was using any of the group set, Ultegra, Jura Ace, uh, SRAM Red, SRAM Force, whatever, I don't think this build would have worked. And uh, I'll go into more details in that video coming up on the channel. Uh, but yeah, pretty stoked how this build turned out in the end. Like I say, stick around the channel tomorrow or the day after-ish for the full video on the L2 ERX group set. Uh, spoiler alert, I've been enjoying that too, but not without its hiccups. And yeah, I'm just glad I own this bike. I think definitely keep it in my arsenal, gonna keep it uh, around. Uh, and yeah, it's just a nice, a nice bike for kind of like eating up the miles and uh, yeah. We'll see how we get on. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the video coming up about the L2 group set. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this build. Uh, how did it turn out in the end? What would you do? You wanna pick one up secondhand and build one up yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay then, China Cycling out.